What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another Back for Blood deck build video and today we're going to be talking about the melee build for Swarm decks. Now, in Swarm this could be run two different ways. You're kind of you're kind of going to be the DPS at times. If you find the Fire Axe especially, Fire Axe is going to deal heavy damage when it comes to melee. But in the first round, essentially, you're just going to be building up survivability. And you could be running survivability the whole time, the way some of these cards interact. If you uh, mulch at the horde, not only are you going to gain life, but you're going to gain melee damage as well. So there's going to be some benefits to that, but we'll get into the deck now. If you want to copy and paste the deck, obviously head down to the description below. I'll have it listed out in order by name. We're starting off with the 35% weak spot damage, Ridden Slayer. Now the big thing about this is in the first round, we're not going to have the most damage when it comes to the melee. We're essentially just corralling the horde, gaining life back, getting some stacks from it. But say this is special infected, going for one of your buddies, bit of a distance away. You're not going to want to, you know, sprint over there because you're going to waste your stamina and you're not going to be able to swing on that special infected by the time you reach there. So we're still, still going to utilize an AR in this build. And the 35% weak spot damage is going to give you enough damage to help out your teammates. You'll still need somebody as the DPS main with this, but you're going to be able to take care of the horde and essentially not need heals for pretty much the whole match and just sustain that survivability. And being able to survive longer in Swarm obviously gives you that ample advantage to winning. But right after that, Berserker gained 10% melee damage, 10% melee speed, and 5% move speed for 4 seconds. Now this will stack, so say you've been chunking at pretty beefy horde you've got about five or six kills in less than four seconds and then some type of bruiser or other special infected comes up on you Let's go straight for that weak spot that that melee damage is going to be amped up enough with the stacks to where you could get close to one shotting that creature if not just two hitting it right with that battle lust we're gaining two health from every kill face your fears we're gaining three temporary health so every kill we're getting five health back and the big thing about that temporary health, this is going to be for the end of the first round, is numb, 15% damage resistance. You are really going to feel this. Keep some pain pills with you. There's going to be some moments where, say there's a wretch just spewing some acid on one of your down teammates trying to bait it. Trust me, when you got that 15% damage resistance and you're playing as Holly with an added 10% damage resistance, you can sit in that acid all day and res somebody and it's going to be no worries to you. It's going to slowly start ticking down at just one, not even one a second. It's unbelievably strong, but that's going to be the end of the first round. A lot of times you're not going to find them fire axe in the first round, so try to find something that's uh, melee and green, machete, the hatchet, another baseball bat. All of those are going to work perfect for you, but you do want to upgrade it and get that different rarity at the beginning of each match. Now, second round, we're starting off with energy bar, 60% stamina regeneration. Since we can't really max out the stamina that much, Holly does add that 25 but we need that regeneration factor just in case we've been using that sprint a couple of times, maybe to avoid special infected or just move over to another teammate. We want to be able to regain that quickly so we can make that sustainable life continuously happen. But right after that, ignore pain, 20% melee damage against mutations. When you deal melee damage to a mutation, gain one temporary health and recover three stamina. This is really going to help us with maintaining that stamina as well in large packs of horde. Sustain that survivability and gain that ample damage against maybe some mutations that have strengthened some of the horde or some of those special infected. Marathon Runner, right after that, 5% move speed. We're just adding to that move speed in general. But now we can strafe, we can backpedal and not have that uh, slowed effect when it comes to that. Right after that, cross trainers, we're trying to amplify that stamina, stamina regen, adding some move speed and a little bit more health. This is really going to be beneficial for you. I think this is going to be... Is this, this is the end of the uh, second round right here. By this point, your survivability is going to be extremely strong. Kind of stick with teammates. Sometimes you won't even need to use your pain pills. You may need to give it to some of your other teammates. Move over to them take some of the horde off of them, gain that health back. And by this point, you possibly find a fire axe. Now, one thing about the fire axe, yeah, it will be a heavy hitter when it comes to the special infected, but you're pretty much going to need to rely on using your AR to clear the horde at certain times. because that fire axe is going to eat into that stamina pretty quick. But if your regeneration is strong and you do it in short bursts and kind of move around with it, you should be able to use it quite effectively. But I'd still say it's one of those moments where you just kind of want to use the machete or the baseball bat or the hatchet, 
get that health up, get those stacks from the Berserker and use that to your advantage instead of wasting all your stamina from a heavy hitting Fire Axe. Now, if you make it into the third round, we're getting superior cardio in there, 50% sprint efficiency, so we're not wasting so much of that uh, stamina at the time whenever we need to move pretty quickly. By the third round, you're gonna need to move a little bit. The big thing about it is by that point, if it does go to this round, the special infected, they're gonna be upgraded. They're gonna have armor on them. They're gonna have increased health. They're gonna increase their damage. The horde's gonna be a lot stronger. So there may be some moments where we need to move a bit more than we needed to before that. Now durable, we're gonna get that 50% trauma resistance. This doesn't really, uh, it's not the most necessary thing for you, but there may be some moments where say the healer's got you in a, you know, after you've taken on one of the special infected, you've taken a bit of damage. If they use the heal on you, you're not going to have too much where that temporary health is maximally needed. But at the same time, it's just adding five health. It's just adding to that survivability with how hectic it can be inside of the third round. Right after that, bomb squad, pick up those grenades. Your explosives are going to be even more deadly. And by this point, since the special infected have already increased their health, they've got armor on them. You're going to need that added explosive damage in order to one shot them with one of those grenades. And right after that final card for the third round, if you haven't already picked up another card from certain rounds through some of the little small crates that you open with tool toolkits, we're adding another grenade into that pouch, just having the moment to where we can hold three grenades. So we've got three special infected. We can insta down right then and there, and save us some time, increase the time we survive, and just give us more time to be able to take out the other team before they even reach our time or pretty much take them out earlier. <clears throat> but right after that evasive action, if you make it this far and you've opened one of those smaller crates, just getting more of that movement speed whenever you take 10 or more damage. This is essentially for those moments when a bruiser or something else comes up and gets that heavy hit. So you'll be able to move away pretty quickly and then lay down some fire. Right after that true grit, whenever you take a single hit, 15 or more damage, heal for eight, uh, eight health over five seconds. Another one of those things that just adds to survivability. Maybe this could save you at certain points. Wasn't too sure about which card to really throw in for the last one, but this one seemed to fit with the melee build. A lot of other cards you could use. This is one that you could switch out. And by all means, if you feel like you needed to trade out any of these cards and move them around, do so. Whatever's comfortable for your playstyle, get onto that. But that's going to be the build for it. I've run it a couple of times. I've had more than a few wins with this, and the survivability is strong with this build. It's going to help your team out with those moments when the DPS needs to focus on the special infected and you can take out the horde around them pretty quickly, as well as maintaining that full height, full health the whole time. But if you have any questions about some of the cards that maybe you want to switch out, or maybe there's something else you would want me to test inside of the swarm decks, let me know down in the comments or head over to the link in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. I'm happy to answer any questions over there, but we'll get straight into the gameplay now and hope you guys have a good one. you get the card, the intel. There, intel. They're heading straight for you. Light them up. I'll take it. Another card? Get another card?
Here, Thanks. I got you. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't even see her die. Well done, team. Keep up the good work. For an easy patrol, looks like you're out of luck. You got Brim coming in hot. Mine. Maintain your positions for as long as possible. There. We've had reports of dangerous swarms of insects. Could be some new mutation. You'd better keep clear. You should find some weapon crates and ammo on the ground left by the local militia. Make use of them if you need to. Mine now. Damn, that box is kind of useless. They're on their way! Get ready! Over there. LMG here. Heads up! Incoming ridden! Getting spread too thin here.
Still made it a lot farther. Good lord. Although I don't know why that team wasn't using a bruiser. Not a bad start. Dig in and hold them back. I tell you what though. That numb card, that is power. No, it doesn't, Godzilla. No, it doesn't. almost five minutes. Chocolate cake. 100% chocolate cake. <laughs> 